Hello YouTubers, thought I'd just do a quick video uh, on my generator, uh, gas generator, power backup system I have for my house. I did this years ago before I did all the solar. Uh, please check out all my other YouTubes um, on how I did my solar projects on the, on the house um, and on my hot rod builds and, and some other things. So uh, please subscribe and hit the like button and I uh, appreciate it. But anyway, uh, snowy day. Today's uh, April 13th in Colorado. Two days of snow and constant here. Ooh, and it's about 13 degrees out right now. It's supposed to be down to nine again tonight. So one of these days, uh, it might be spring here in Colorado. But anyway, so I have a 3000 watt uh, Honda generator. I really like these generators. They run extremely well. They start up great. Um, and when they're running, it's gotta be one of the quietest generators out there. This is a 3000 watt Honda. I picked this up used. Um, a guy used it for his for his ice shack or something, you know, ice fishing here in Colorado. And I only used it like one time, and I got it for a pretty good deal on Craigslist. But it's a 3,000 watt Honda, and again, extremely quiet to use. Uh, and I just roll it out of my shed here when I need it. I do have it on a trickle charger because um, it does have an electric start on it so uh, if you have one of these make sure you keep it uh, you know topped off with a trickle charger um, and then I also have a three uh, 2000 watt Honda that I used to use for my camper um, but since uh, I put solar on my camper uh, it's super nice not to be able to have to drag this around and gas cans and all that stuff to run my RV so check out my other v RV uh, video on my RV uh, putting solar power on that it's a pretty cool video. Um, so anyway, so I'll, I'll take you and show you the inside here in a minute. But this is the uh, wall plug that I have in my mechanical rooms on the other side of this wall. And I just have this little cover thing. I think I got it on Amazon or Home Depot. And it just flips up. And I'll show you the inside. This is a PVC pipe. And then I glued a collar on it, uh, the pinched in between the wall. But I wanted a way of... Um, having a way to plug in the generator um, without having to prop the door, run a cord out the door, that sort of thing. So so I fashioned this up, it works really well. I guess there's some other ones that you could plug in, and but this is the hell I did it. Um, so I have the plug on the end and I went with a twist plug on it. Um, so a twist plug, this is a twist plug in, and this will give you a 30 amp uh, rating on the power and this will match up with my 30 amps coming off of my uh, generator. Now, if you did just a regular three-prong plug, uh, it would be a 20 amp. And then you can get an adapter down to just a standard three-plug, uh, three-conductor, you know, three-prong uh, wall plug and to make an adapter. And I could actually use my other generator in there too if I want. So, so just come up to it, put it in like this. Okay, let's go into the mechanical room on the other side of the wall. And you can see I have a way of running the cord out through the wall. And I guess you could uh, just run extension cords, you know, plug your refrigerator in and, uh, you know, have your door cracked open. But when it's cold, it's kind of nice to have it uh, sealed um, so I don't have to leave the door open and run the cable out the door to the generator. So what I did is cut a hole through the wall and again the generator outside is right on the other side of this wall. Um, I got a couple pieces of PVC pipe, a coupling, and then uh, one of these thread-on connectors and I drilled a hole in the end um, to fit the diameter of the 12 gauge wire that I have and as you can see I could slide this in and out um, and then I've got the cover I showed you on the outside so um, I just leave the wire coiled up here. I put one of these hooks on from Lowe's and keep it coiled up. And when I need it, I just undo it like this. And then, you know, stretch it back out and then just feed it out the wall and I'm good to go. So nice sealed, keeps the bugs from getting in. And then what I did is I have another hook here and I have an extension cord here. Okay. So... Let's talk about how this thing wires in. So this is a transfer switch, and I found this on eBay. You could find uh, different types of transfer switches. This is basically a four-circuit ABCD. They have it labeled. Um, 
It didn't set me back a whole lot. It was like a couple hundred bucks, I think. And what was nice, it came already with the flexible conduit that runs into the electrical panel uh, up underneath. And what it does is it basically takes one of my breakers, so I figured out the critical loads. So in my kitchen, I have the, uh, the refrigerator, freezer, circuit, I have the lights, I have the TV, and I came up with four circuits um, that I wanted to use. So I'm using basically three of these switches, one, two, and three, as my circuits. And then what I did is on my fourth circuit, I wired in just a standard wall plug. So that's my generator power, okay? So when I flip switch D onto generator, it powers up that plug. And then I've got my extension cord coiled up down here. I can plug into one of these sockets and then run it into the house, maybe on another load or another device that I want to power that's not, uh, you know, pre-wired in. So I just wanted to have that capability. So on my A, I have refrigerator freezer, which I need to keep running. Um, B is my kitchen lights and a couple receptacles. And then C is my uh, southwest uh, wall, which has my stove and TV and stuff on it. Okay. So when you get this box, recommend, if you don't have electrical background, get, you can have an electrician install this pretty simple in a matter of maybe an hour. It's not that big a deal. It comes already with the flexible conduit. Also comes with the wires already sitting there. So each of these switches has one wire on either side of the switch. Um, and what you do is figure out your critical load on your breaker. And what it is, is you disconnect the line side of the breaker, the power coming into the breaker. You know, the breaker other side power is going to be on the, the bus on one leg of your 115. And take the other lead that's coming into your, disconnect it tie it on to the wire that they give you for that one circuit. They give you a wire nut, screw it on, and then take the other lead for that circuit and then put it back onto the fuse, or the breaker, I should say. Um, and then you're done. So again, if you don't have electrical background, highly recommend just have an electrician come in and do it. Shouldn't cost much and, and be a lot safer. And I did have this code inspected, so this is the code. So I've seen uh, some people in the past, uh, they run their generators, especially if they have a 220 volt generator, which I'm just doing a 115 out there, 30 amp. Uh, but I've seen some hokey stuff where they run an extension cord and they're back feeding uh, the breaker on the house through a electric dryer plug um, or a shop plug out in the shop for welding. Got a 220 plug and then they, uh, Run an extension cord with a couple prongs and then throw the main breakers off on the house and then uh, back feed, which is a really bad way of doing it. It's extremely dangerous. Plus, if you don't cut out the mains, you might be putting voltage back onto the grid and potentially electrocuting a alignment or something might be working on the lines, that sort of thing. So, so anyway, this is the code. This is safe. Um, there are different uh, transfer switches available. Again, you can get one with more circuits on it, but depending on the load, uh, like that socket or a socket in the kitchen, um, on a 12-gauge wire, 20-amp breaker, um, is typically you're running a device maybe 1,400 watts, which is your typical appliance, um, like your Instapot or blender or that sort of thing is, is about 50, 1,400 watts. Um, so anyway... So different transfer switches available. Uh, one of my neighbors put in a big Generac system and it has an automatic transfer switch um, that detects when the line drops out, the grid drops out, it automatically throws the switch, starts up the generator. And I think uh, a couple of my neighbors are running them on natural gas. But remember, uh, natural gas, uh, the gas company uses electricity to pump the gas. So, you know, if there's a major outage, um, then that might be affected too. Then the other backup would be running on propane, have a propane tank uh, to run a generator. But I don't want to monkey through all that. So um, hope this helps. Um, so let's go back outside and uh, we'll see uh, how I hooked it up um, on the outside once I push this plug through. Okay, let's go plug it in and then give it a twist and it locks it on so it doesn't fall out. So that covers that part of it. Start this generator up. Again, it's a 3,000 watt Honda. 
Turned it on, put the choke out. So the Hondas have eco mode and then it has uh, just uh, an eco throttle. So if you want it more quieter, turn that on. And this is how quiet this is, 3000 watts. And you can still hear me talking. Uh, nice and quiet um, or I could turn it off and then it takes the eco throttle off revs it up a little bit but it's still reasonable so let's go ahead inside everything's running I'm all plugged in through my connector there and uh, let's go ahead and hit the transfer switch and we'll run on generator power inside to my transfer switch I have all my circuits here again like I covered before um, this is line side, so this is I'm on the grid right now, and I don't have a power outage, so I'm on power right now. But I'll flip over. You can go and turn the circuits off in the middle, um, and then when I flip up, now I'm on generator power. So right now I have three of my critical circuits running off the generator. It's that simple, and then. When the power comes back on, you'll see it in the house. Uh, maybe your lights come on in your living room or on another circuit that this isn't tied to. Um, and when you see that, just come down, flip them back on to line all the way down. And now I'm running on the grid. Go turn off your generator, push the cord in through the wall, and that's pretty much it. So if you have any questions, leave it in the comments section. Uh, please subscribe. I have a ton of other videos on different stuff, including solar and hot rod builds, like I mentioned earlier, um, and hit the like button. So that's all for now. Uh, have a great day. Thanks.